Hello everybody, Internet here, back again another video. Alright guys, we have the fourth Grand Slam tournament just around the corner. The last Grand Slam tournament of this 2022 season in tennis. And uh, you, have, you guys uh, have uh, asked, man, Inter, when will, when will a preview come? When will you do a top 8 favorite list? We are waiting for it. Inter Interi is a super, super, super busy guy. And I, I have things to do all the time, my tennis friends, all around the world. So even though the draw came out, I don't know, two, two days ago or something, I, do, I, I really haven't, haven't, I haven't had time to do a preview immediately. It was impossible, but I have just some time just before I go to work here. And I've tried to watch the draw. I've analyzed the draw. And I have done a top eight favorite list by tennis friends all around the world. So here it comes. Without any further ado, I will give it to you. Are you ready? Here it comes. First of all, it is very sad news that Novak Djokovic is not playing. I was, I'm not surprised, this was expecting, I was expecting not to see him because we all know the situation, he is not vaccinated and I, I was hoping when he won Wimbledon that maybe we'll see him in the US Open, I was hoping, but I was not, I was not expecting him to be here. It is what it is, I don't like it, I really hate this, uh, I want to see the best tennis players in the world play the biggest tournament, especially one of the GOATs, like Novak Djokovic for sure is. He's one of he's one of the greatest tennis players of all time, together with Nadal and Roger Federer. And one day he has the big chance even being the greatest of all time alone. But he's not here and I don't want to talk much about that. I'm not happy that Djokovic is not in New York, but what can I do? I cannot do. It is what it is, like Novak Djokovic most times says in his interviews. All right, guys, let's get into this top favorite, this top eight favorite list. On my eighth place, I have Taylor Fritz. Taylor Fritz, who won Indian Wells early this year, uh, defeated Rafa Nadal in the final, uh, an injured Rafa Nadal. We, I must mention, he was he was in the. Quarterfinal early this year at Wimbledon, lost an epic five-set battle against Nadal. Uh, he has a big serve, big forehand, solid backhand. Uh, uh, he's not the greatest mover. He's playing in his home country. He should do some noise here. His draw doesn't look murderous hard. I've seen it. He has hold in the first round, a guy that I've never heard. I think he's an American. And then in the second round, possibly he can face Bedene. Uh, Bedene, who... Ah, he doesn't do, he has not done much in his career, Bedene. So, if Bedene wins his first round, which I think he will do, he he will face Taylor Fritz, and I think Taylor Fritz should come through him. In the third round, Taylor can face Stan or Van de Zensch. Most likely it will be Van de Zensch. I don't think Stan Wawrinka, he will win two matches. Stan Wawrinka is the yesterday's news. And then in the fourth round, he can face the the fifth seed, Casper Ruud. Casper Ruud, he's a great clay court player. He he has won the majority of his tournaments on clay, Casper Ruud. Uh, but this this surface at New York is pretty fast, a low bouncing surface. I think it will be too fast for Casper Ruud. I don't know if Casper even will be in that fourth round. But even if Casper is in that fourth round, I favor Taylor Fritz. I have Taylor Fritz in my eighth place. I think Taylor Fritz will go to the quarterfinal. On my seventh place. I have Cam Nori. Cam Nori, a lefty with a good slice serve, good forehand, solid backhand, solid mover. Uh, Cam Nori, he can do some damage. He did a great run at Wimbledon early this year. Uh, he was in the semi final in Wimbledon early this year, lost to Novak Djokovic there. He can do some damage, Cam Nori, here at New York. Uh, I've seen his draw, doesn't look super difficult. He has Paré in the first round. We all know Paré. He is one of the biggest clowns in the Tour, uh, where he doesn't take his tennis so serious. He tries sometimes, but mostly not. 
Uh, anyway, he has Perry in the first round, Cam Nori. I think he will come through him. Then in the second round, he can face McDonald, a solid American tennis player who can do some damage sometimes, but he doesn't do deep rounds uh, mostly times, uh, McDonald. Uh, Cam Nori. Then he can face Isner or Rooney in the third round, Cam Nori. Isner, we all know, with that huge serve, huge forehand, he can do damage at least for the first couple of rounds, then at some point Isner's body will, bro will break down, like we usually do, especially this late in his career. Or he can maybe face Rune in the third round, but Rune has been a pretty horrible last two, three months, let's, to say the least. Since, this, since his run at, since his quarterfinal run at French Open early this year, Rune has more or less not won any tennis matches. So I don't know if we will see Rooney in the third round against uh, Cam Nori. May, most likely it will be Isner. Anyway, in the fourth round, uh, Cam Nori can face Rublev. And Rublev, where has the dude been? He has been, I don't know where he has been Rublev, but he has not, winning, he has not been winning many tennis matches the last couple of months under Rublev. And I don't trust under Rublev. He is the Mr. 500, 500 class player. He doesn't do big damages on Masters. He doesn't do big damages on Grand Slams. He has never been in a Grand Slam semi-final under Rublev. He has been a couple of quarterfinals, a couple of fourth rounds, but he has never been past the quarterfinals in the semi-final stages. Andrei Rublev, even Cam Nori has done better than him. Even though that Cam Nori has not won more tournaments than Andrei Rublev. Uh, he has done, a, he has... He played his first ever semi-final in Grand Slams earlier this year at Wimbledon, Cam Nori. Something Rublev has never done. Anyway, uh, he can face potentially uh, Andrew Rublev in the fourth round, Cam Nori. So, but I have Cam Nori going to that quarterfinal, so Cam Nori is my seventh place. On the sixth place, I have... Pablo Corena Busta, PCB, the Montreal... Most 1000 champion earlier this year, where he won his first ever Most 1000 title. I have him on a sixth place. I think he can do some noise, some damage here. Po Ka Pablo Corona Busta. He was, he was playing like a machine in Montreal, but we all know it is Most Masters. It is a three set tournament. It is a big, it, it is a different story in a five set tournament like Grand Slams are. But Pablo Corona Busta, he tends to do good runs at US Open. Uh, he has done some good runs at US Open in the past. He just came from a his biggest title in his career in Montreal, where he played fantastic tennis. And he's, he has a Tricky first round opponent against Dominic Team. That probably is the biggest and most excited and most hyped first round match. Dominic Team, he's he has been pretty horrible last 14 to 16 months with consist with inconsistent results and especially with in injuries. So Dominic Team can't take out Pablana Corona Boost in the first round. He can. But I Favor Pablo Corona Busta to take out Dominic Team because I think that Pablo Corona Busta he comes in in New York with big confidence, with his biggest title in his career, like I said, winning Montreal, and I think he will be too solid from the baseline for Dominic Team to handle. I think Dominic Team will do a lot of unforced errors, and in the end, Pablo Corona Busta will win the match. That is what I think, but I can be wrong. You never know. Dominic Team is a former Grand Slam champion. Uh, Dominic Team is a former Grand uh, U.S. Open champion. Last time Dominic Team actually played U.S. Open was 2020, and he won it. And he has not played it for the last two editions, 2021. Uh, he, he did not two editions. He didn't play it last year uh, in 2021. Dominic Team. He was injured. Anyway, Pablo Nakarin Busta has a tricky first round opponent, but I think he will take out Dominic Team. And then the second round, Pablo Nakarin Busta can face Bublik. We all know Bublik is a very inconsistent tennis player. Sometimes he can play really good, sometimes he can play horrible. And then in the third, he can potentially face Diminaur. We all know Diminaur is a light version of Leighton Hewitt. A very, very light version of Leighton Hewitt. Uh, but I think PCB will be too solid, too tough, too consistent from the baseline for Diminaur to handle. And in the fourth round, that, that come with, it is there where PCB's first, first, First big huge test probably comes, and it is against Felix Alassime. Felix Alassime, who, who has not had super great months since he did his good, good run at French Open earlier this year in the fourth round, where he took Rafa Nadal to the limits and took Rafa Nadal to, the, to five sets. The only player in that French Open edition earlier this year who took Rafa Nadal the 
who took who took the most sets from Rafa Nadal. Rafa Nadal didn't lose two sets against any other player in his seven matches in this year's French Open. But he did that against Felix Yelassime. But Felix Yelassime has not do, done great results since then. He's so inconsistent, like Denis Shapovalov as well. Both these two Canadian dudes are super, super inconsistent. You can never trust them. Anyway, Felix can go to that fourth round and face PCB. I favor PCB there. PCB is on my sixth place. On my fifth place, I have another new Master 1000 champion from this year, and it is Bona Choric. Choric won Cincinnati early this year and lost only one set in six matches in Cincinnati and was playing impressive tennis. The only set he lost there was against Rafael Nadal. Choric, he has a big game, big serve, big backhand. His forehand can be a weakness. Uh, you can attack his forehand and his forehand can, you can break down his forehand. He is a great mover. Uh, but he did a great result in Cincinnati with, like I said, one six matches against and lost only one set, won five of those matches against seeded players, he will probably come in into this uh, Grand Slam tournament with big confidence. Uh, and I like his draw. He has Gorjad, or whatever you mentioned his name in the first round, a player I've never heard about. Then he can face Lajovic or Brooks in the second round. Both of those two players have been not good the last 12 months. To, be, to say the least, neither Lajovic, neither Brooksby. So it should come through both of them, whoever he faces in the second round, Lajovic or Brooksby. And then third, he can face Alcaraz. Alcaraz, the super hot Spanish teenager. Yeah, he's still a teenager, I think. He's 19 years old. You, I think you are a teenager until you are 19. Uh, Alcaraz can take out Cholich in the third round. Yeah, I know that. But I will fancy Chorich's chances more than Alcaraz. I, Alcaraz is a great, super talented player with a super uh, great future in head, a future Grand Slam winner. Uh, but I think we have been hyping him a little too much as of late. I did it little when he won Madrid, when he won back-to-back -back matches against Nadal and Djokovic. And... Uh, He's a two times Master 1000 champion uh, in this year. He won Madrid and he won in Miami as well. Uh, not Miami. Uh, not Miami. Uh, yeah, Miami. Yeah, he won Miami. Yes, he won Madrid and Miami this year. Master 1000 tournaments, uh, Alcaraz. But man, he has not been showing great results in Grand Slams. He has not been. Uh, to a semi-final in Grand Slams. The deepest Alcaraz has been in Grand Slams is quarterfinals, actually. He has never been uh, deeper than quarterfinals. Uh, so, and here in the third round, he has a tough test against Bona Cioric. If Cioric wins his first two rounds, you never know. You never know with these dudes. We have seen it in the past. They win most of thousand titles, this not very high-ranked place like Cioric is not. And then they lose early in the Grand Slam. So if Cioric wins his first two rounds, then Alcaraz will, ha will have his hands full against Cioric in the third round. I th because I think Alcaraz will win his first two rounds. But I favor Cioric in that third round, a clash against Alcaraz. And then Alcaraz can, and then Cioric can face Ev Evans or Cilic in the fourth round. Anyway, I have Cioric on my fifth place. So these, these four players, I believe, will go to the quarterfinals. Fritz. On the 8th place, Nori on the 7th place, PCB on the 6th place, and Choric on the 5th place. Choric is my highest quarterfinal candidate from these uh, quarterfinals candidates, from 8th place to 5th place. Alright, now we are on the semifinal candidates, which is the 4th place. On the 4th place, my tennis friends all around the world, I have Yannick Sinner. Yeah, Yannick Sinner... Uh, he is a good shot maker. He is a great ball striker. Has a decent, decent ground strokes, both forehand, backhand, solid serve, good returns. He's not, the, he's not super fast on the court. He's not the great. He's not a speed demon, but he is a good, great ball striker and can do big damages. He did a great run at Wimbledon. He pushed off Novak Djokovic to the five to five sets. Was two sets to love up against Novak Djokovic in that fourth round. Uh, in Wimbledon, and then he did a great run at French Open as well, actually, but he was forced to pull out due to injury. So, 
and I like Sinus draw. He has El Mai on the first round, a dude I've never heard about. Then he can face Martinez on the second round. Then he can face Grigor or uh, Hurka, Grigor in the third round. And then in fourth round, he can face uh, Hurkacz, Yannick, uh, uh, Yannick Sinner. So, uh, I like Sinner's draw. I think Sinner can make it to a semi-final. Uh, so, I have him on a fourth place, Yannick Sinner. All right, guys, on a third place, I have Stefano Titipas. Titipas historically has not done great rounds at US Open. He has not done deep rounds at US Open. US Open and Wimbledon are Titipas' worst Grand Slams, if you compare that with Austral Open and French Open, where he has done, where he has played, uh, where he has done his best results in Grand Slams. Uh, Titipas, it is in Austral Open, which we have, where, where he has played a couple of semifinals, and of course, uh, French Open, where he played the French Open final last year against Novak Djokovic, Titipas. Uh, here at US Open and Wimbledon, Titipas has not been super consistent. But I think he can do a deep run now. I don't know, I have just that feeling. The, fa the courts are fast, it is low bouncing, he should be rewarded with his serve. He has pretty good serve, Titipas, pretty good forehand. Uh, we know his weaknesses, it is his backhand and his returns, but I like his draw, man. Gallan in the first round. That, that doesn't scare Titipas. Thompson or Sonego in the second round. Titipas should come through both Thompson or Sonego, whoever he faces in the second round. The third round he can face Fokina, David Fokina. David Fokina, what has he done since he, did, since he played his first ever Master 1000 final earlier in Monte Carlo? What has Fokina done? Basically nothing. Uh, that we can face Fokina in the third round, Titipas, if Fokina wins two matches. And then in the fourth round, he can face uh, uh, Berrettini uh, or Andy Murray, Titipas. Ah, I don't think Andy Murray will go to that fourth round. Andy Murray, he doesn't do big damages late in his career. He wins one or two matches mostly in big events, Andy Murray, and then he gets knocked out. So most likely he will face Matteo Berrettini in the fourth round, Titipas. And I fancy. Titipas chances more than Matteo Berrettini. Uh, Matteo can take out Titipas in the fourth round, absolutely. But I, I don't know. I like Titipas chances more than Matteo Berrettini in that potential fourth round clash. So I have Titipas uh, on my third place. I think he can do a, a good run here this Open, and why not a semi final run? Why not? Considering that I like his draw. So guys, there you have the, there you have the semi-final candidates. Sinner in the fourth place, he, I think he will go to the semi-final. And Titipas in the third place, I think he will go to the semi-final. Now we have only two spots left. And you probably know what the, who, who those names are I will put on my highest places. But the, 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 the thing, the, 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 my, my million dollar question maybe for you guys is who I will have second and who I will have first. All right, guys, here it comes. On a second place, even though he has not done great results, even though this year, even though he has not won, he has won only one tournament in this year's 2022 season, and that was only, and that is a 250 class tournament. Uh, but it is still his best Grand Slam tournament. US Open is his best Grand Slam tournament. He has won only one Grand Slam title in his career, this player I'm talking about, and that Grand Slam title has come in this Grand Slam tournament. And the player I'm speaking about, you know, you know it by now. And after all, he's the world number one. He's not the most impressive, the world, he's not the most impressive world number one. He's not. According to me, one of the weakest world number ones I've seen. One of, not the weakest, one of. But it is still world, he's still world number one. And the surface plays fast. He will be rewarded with his big serve. Uh, he's hard fitting through. You cannot hit through him easy. He's a ball machine to the baseline. And the player I'm talking about is Daniel Medvedev. I have him on a second place. He has not an easy draw. He has not, especially not later in the tournament. I will come to that uh, soon. Uh, but... When he played the 2022 edition, he went to the semi-final. He lost to the, the eventual champion Dominic Thiem in the semi-final in three close sets down Medvedev. Last year, he won the, 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 uh, everything. He won the entire tournament in the 2022, in the 2021 US Open edition and defeated Novak Djokovic in the final in straight sets. A nervous Novak Djokovic who was playing for the Grand Slam. He was 
very very nervous one it was one of Novak Djokovic weakest performance that I've ever seen anyway we we, I, we should not take any credit away from the damn that he won fair and square and David Novak Djokovic in straight sets in last year's US Open final so and his draw cost love in the first round that will not scare him Rindernetsch in the second round that will, if Rindernetsch wins his first round that will not scare him as well in the third round, the hard-hitting Bashashvili, if Bashashvili wins two rounds, which is very undoubtful that maybe he will not, he will do. You never know with Bashashvili, he's so inconsistent. Anyway, he can face Bashashvili in the third round. I fancy Medvedev there. Medvedev's big, big test will most likely come against Nick Kyrgios in the fourth round. If Nick Kyrgios wins three matches. And we know Nick Kyrgios just defeated him recently. Uh... Uh, so, uh, but this is a five sets match. If Nick Kyrgios wins three matches, we well, never know with Nick. We know Nick did a great run at Wimbledon, played the final there, lost to the, lost to the champion Novak Djokovic in four tight sets, and actually should be proud of his performance against Novak Djokovic because he pushed Novak Djokovic pretty good, more than what Berrettini did in last year's Wimbledon final 2021. So, but. Uh, do I think Nick Kyrgios has it in him to do a great run here as well at US Open and maybe play a US Open final? Yeah, it can happen. But I just, I really don't think Nick Kyrgios will play back-to-back -back Grassland finals. He is good. He's super talented. He has great serve, great forehand, solid back and great returns. Not great returns, good returns. Uh, but he's not super consistent, Nick Kyrgios. He is not. He's, he has been good, he's been actually quite consistent this year, but I just don't think Nick Kyrgios will play back-to-back -back Grand Slam Finals. He played the Grand Slam Finals when well done. Because I have a feeling that the winner in that fourth round match will maybe play the, the US Open Final. I don't know, I don't know. But anyway, I, I just think that Medvedev, he... We see a different version of Medvedev when, when it comes into US Open. We, just like I said, in 2020, he played the semi-final, lost three tight sets against Dominic Thiem. The Dominic Thiem who, played, who won his first ever Grand Slam title, uh, that 2020 US Open edition. In 2021, he won the entire thing, defeated Novak Djokovic in the final straight sets. So, historically, Daniel Medvedev does good results in US Open. So, I think he will do that this year as well. I have him on second place. I like his draw besides the fourth round where he has a huge, huge test against... Uh, Nick Kyrgios, if Nick Kyrgios wins his first three matches, which I believe he will do, but you never know with Nick Kyrgios. Anyway, I have Dan Medvedev on my second place. I think he will play the US Open final. And guys, my number one favorite. I did a video a couple of days ago. I said that the man to beat at US Open this year is Rafa Nadal. He has nobody. He, the player who, is, who he fears the most is not here. And the player I'm talking about is Novak Djokovic. Novak Djokovic is not here. He has not defeated Novak Djokovic outside of clay in nine years' time. Since 2013 years open. That is nine years my tennis has all around the world. All the other dudes that are here, he is not afraid of them. He respects them. But he doesn't. He is not afraid of them. And if this was not enough, my, for God's sakes, his draw is... Man. Yeah. If you, are, if you are a high seed, like Nadal is, he's the second seed, you should have an easy draw. But this man, this is maybe one of the easiest draws that I've ever seen Nadal get in a Grand Slam tournament. The first one, Hiakata. Who, has, who bloody has heard about Hiakata? Just tell me, who have, have somebody of you who watches this video ever heard about Hiakata? Rafa Nadal can beat that dude with his right arm. Let alone with his left arm. I don't, know, I don't want to talk more about that first round opponent that Nadal has. And the second round, Karachev or Fognini. In yesterday's news. What has Karachev done since he did his great run at Asrul Open last year in the semi-final? He did some good results in the, uh, in the spring as well. He, did a, he won the Dubai tournament last year, Karachev. And then played the final in Belgrade. Lost to Britain in the final. Karachev. After that, what, what has Kacha done? If Kacha wins his first round, he will not stand a chance against Nadal in the second round. And Fognini, 
Fabrizio, I know we, he defeated Nadal seven years ago at the US Open when it came down from, from two sets to love down. But it is not the same for Gnini. If Fognini wins his first round, Fognini will not defeat Nadal in the second round in this year's US Open. Forget that my test went all, all around the world. And then the third round, Kesmanovic. He can face Kesmanovic, Rafa Nadal, if Kesmanovic wins his two first rounds. And in the fourth round, he can face Diego Schwartzman. Diego Schwartzman, I don't think Diego will be in the fourth round, to be quite honest. I think this will be too fast of a surface for Diego to handle. And Diego, you need to have a big serve in this surface. You need it. You, you will be rewarded with your serve here because it's a, it's a fast, low-bouncing surface. And I don't think Diego will win three matches here at this fast, low-bouncing surface with this weak serve. Anyway, he can face Diego potential in the fourth round. If not Diego, he can face Gasquet. How many times has Rafa Nadal defeated Gasquet? I don't know. I've lost the count, but it is more than 15 times, if I'm not mistaken. Gasquet has never defeated Rafa Nadal on the ATP Tour. Last time Gasquet defeated Nadal was when they were 13 years old. So if Gasquet is in that fourth round, Gas Nadal will eat up Gasquet like Nadal eats his breakfast at Ma in Mallorca or anywhere in the world. So there you had Na Rafa Nadal's first four potential opponents. And then, so I have Rafa Nadal on my number one spot. I think Rafael Nadal, he means business. We, we saw what happened in Astral Open earlier this year when he, he didn't have is the player he fears the most, Novak Djokovic there. He went on and won Astral Open and won Astral Open for the first time in 13 years. Last time Nadal won Astral Open before he won it for the second time was in 2009. And then he won it 13 years later in 2022. Because the player who he feared the most was not there, Novak Djokovic. I will be honest with you, if Djokovic would have been in Astral Open this year, I don't think Nadal would have won. I'm not sure Djokovic would have won Astral Open. Because Djokovic doesn't handle Medvedev as good as Nadal do. But I think Djokovic would have crashed the party for Nadal in the semi-final. Because I remember they were in the same section of the draw. They, they, the collision course was to face each other in the semi-final. And I don't think Nadal would have defeated Djokovic in that semi-final match in Astral Open this year. Uh, but anyway, Djokovic didn't play there. We all know what, what, what kind of a drama we got in that Astral Open edition earlier this year. So Djokovic is not here as well. And Nadal knows this. And Nadal, I don't, Nadal will not... He will not lose sleep for a Djokovic is not in New York. He will not, guys. He is happy. Of course, he doesn't admit this, but he's super happy. He doesn't care that people will say this maybe will be an, an astres, a, a asterisk Grand Slam tournament. He knows that 50 years from now, people will only watch the numbers. Who won more Grand Slams? And Nadal knows, as long as Djokovic doesn't play Grand Slam tournaments, his chances increase crazy much to win the Grand Slam titles. So Nadal is my number one favorite because the player who he fears the most, Novak Djokovic, is not here. And he has a cakewalk of a draw. So I think we'll have quarterfinal matches. So I think Nadal will lift his 23rd Grand Slam title in this 2022 US Open edition. Quarterfinal matches, potential quarterfinal matches. I don't think I will get right all of them. I don't really don't think so. Maybe I will get right one or two. I, mean, I think we'll get many surprises. I think we will get a chaotic US Open tournament. I think we're always, we, will, it, we always will get upsets and it will not be any difference in this year's US Open. So quarterfinal matches, Medvedev against Karna Busta. I think Medvedev takes out Busta. Uh, Titipas against Fritz. I think Titipas takes out Fritz. Sinner against Choric. I think Sinner takes out Choric. Nadal against Nori. I think Nadal takes out Nori. There you have the quarterfinal matches. Then the semifinal matches. I think Nadal against Sinner. I think Nadal takes out Sinner in the, in the in in one of the semifinal matches. And the and then the other semifinal match. I think will be between Medvedev and Tsitsipas. I think Medvedev takes out Tsitsipas, even though the Tsitsipas just defeated Medvedev in. Uh, in Cincinnati, but in a best of five set match, I think that Medvedev will be uh, too strong, too solid for Tsitsipas to handle. So I think Medvedev takes out Tsitsipas in the other semi final. And then I think we will have a US Open final exactly like we had in the Astral Open final earlier this year, this year, and that is between Rafa Nadal against Daniel Medvedev. And I think we'll get the exactly the same result like we got in Astral Open this year, where Rafa Nadal took out Medvedev in that final in five set 
epic battle. And I think we'll get the same here. Uh, I think Nadal will take out Medvedev four or five sets in, the, in this year's US Open final. So there you have, guys, this preview of the US Open 2022 edition. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and see you next time. Peace. And some dark horses. Let's have some dark horses, man. I always have some dark horses before. I always, I always, almost forgot that. Some dark horses. Why not Andy Murray? He's still Andy Murray, a three times Grand Slam champion. He's one of my dark horses. Why not Stan Wawrinka? He can also be a dark horse. Uh, dark horses is a player who are not high ranked. All right, so we shall not forget. Two. Andy Murray, Stan Wawrinka, and why not Nick Kyrgios? Nick Kyrgios is a huge dark horse. Probably he's the he's the my biggest dark horse, Nick Kyrgios, because he's not seeded. Uh, neither of the, these three players are seeded, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe Murray and Stan Wawrinka, one of them, or maybe seeded. I don't know. I'm not watched the ranking, but Nick Kyrgios is not seeded. So Nick Kyrgios is one of my biggest dark horse. Uh, uh, Nobody wants to face Nick Kyrgios. He's the most dangerous, unseated players in the entire tournament. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't stop subscribing. See you next time. Peace.